Hello, welcome to the My Community Made YouTube channel. Here I am on the test site. I am showing you guys how to create a new shop with My Community Made, as well as answering a few questions that we've gotten fairly often from new sellers. I'll be going over how to create a store, what you might need before you create your store, how to customize some of the options that are sort of special to My Community Made that you don't really get anywhere else. I'll also be answering some questions that I've heard quite a few times as I go about this and giving you some pointers on how to avoid some common pitfalls when setting up your store. Uh, so don't mind this account was already registered with your email address error. I forgot that I already have a test shop on this site and I create, tried to create a new one uh, in a previous recording. I am going to pretend it doesn't exist and I've deleted that account. I'm going to go ahead and recreate it. So first things first. I am on the slash my account URL, which is where you go to sign up with my community made. I am going to add my email address. This here, this email address that you're using is going to be the same email address that you'll receive all communications from my community made with. So before I get started filling out the rest of these fields, let's just quickly go over what you need before you even sign up with my community made. One, you'll want to make sure that your products fit within our rules for, for what you can sell on the platform. You want to make sure you're producing handmade or vintage goods that you can sell legally within the U.S. and all states across the country. No regulated materials of any kind. Two, you'll want to make sure that you have an email address that you're happy to receive all of your business details through. This is the email address that we're going to use to send you billing details. This is the email address that customers are going to send emails to. This is the email address that support emails will be answered with. So you'll want to have a nice email address. It can be through Gmail or Yahoo, but you, you just want to make sure that it's not necessarily your personal email and that you'll be okay receiving emails there. And then number three, you're going to need a shop name. You're going to want to pick your name ahead of time. So... Once you have your shop name picked, your email address and your products are all legal to sell, you're going to fill in your first and last name, your email address, and then your shop name. In this case, we're going for the name Test Shop. So your shop name would be whatever you use to sell your product. Don't worry if it's too long. Uh, I'm going to show you a little trick with how to get away with longer store names. And here we go. I've generated a shop URL here. And it's going to check the database just to make sure that shop URL is unique. So for those of you that don't know what a shop URL is, is you can think of it like your address. It tells the website, it tells Google where your shop exists in that, that site, um, how to find it. So when you give somebody a business card, you could tell them, hey, you can find me on My Community Made. My name is Test Shop. Or you could also give them a QR code that has the shop URL baked in. Or you could give them this, this link here, um, test-shop and they'll be able to find test shop very quickly. Uh, but as you can see, we have a little error here. It turns out somebody else in the website has already created test shop. So in order for me to create this store, I need to change my shop URL. So uh, some people are confused. They think we're asking for an existing website. We're actually asking you to create your new web address. So in this case, because the one I wanted that was generated automatically from my shop name doesn't exist, I'm just going to append two to the end of it. And let's see if that is available. And there we go. That shop name is available. I'm going to add my fake phone number here. I am going to say I have read and agreed to the terms and conditions. Yeah, if you're not aware, we have a terms and conditions page. You can read that and learn all about what we allow and what we don't. A uh, subscription pack. So a lot of people get confused with the subscription packs. They hear that we're a free service. Then as they're signing up, they see this basic package monthly. We appreciate everyone who pays for the basic package. It really helps us operate the platform. Since we don't have transaction fees in any way, the only way we earn money is when you choose to sign up for the basic package or when you view ads on our site. Uh, what the basic package does is it just allows you to list 50 products. In order to do that, you need to give us $5, and then we expand your product inventory so that you can list up to 50. You have the option to pay that subscription in monthly, quarterly, or yearly amounts, but as you can see, there is no reduction in price for paying yearly or quarterly. Uh, it just allows you to get less bills. In our case, we're going to go for the free package. This is our most common user type. The free package is just as good as the basic, but you're going to be limited to five products. For our case, that is fine. You can see I've checked that I subscribe to our newsletter. This is where you're going to receive information 
on products that are being sold in the shops, new updates, all of those items. Whether or not you subscribe to the newsletter, you will receive critical updates through My Community Made. So anyone who's already signed up knows that you receive updates every once in a while. For instance, when we updated the ability to add video to your gallery, that was an announcement. Those are different than the newsletter. The newsletter is more about selling products while the announcements are more critical to new features that have been added to the site. Now you can see here that you can also register using your Facebook or your Google account. That's perfectly acceptable. For this case, I've chosen to just use my email. And now I click register. And here we go. I have registered. I can see that I am on my account. So first things first, this is your account page. This is something that everyone on my community made has, uh, e regular customers and vendors. So this is where you go when you're looking at changing details that only we would know. For instance, your address or your phone number, your billing details, if those change, it's where you can register for our affiliate program, all of those things. Your selling actually takes place in the vendor dashboard. So you can see here, we got this big red button. It says, go to vendor dashboard. You'll want to click that right away. So you can start setting up your shop. So here we go. Now I am on my vendor shop and it's time for me to start customizing, start making my vendor shop mine. So first things first, you're going to want to go to settings. You're going to want to go to store. So for the sake of comparison, I'm going to open up my community made in a separate tab. So the reason that I'm opening up my community made in a separate tab is because it'll be easier for me to sort of show you what a completed shop looks like and what fields were added in order to make that happen. So first things first, your banner image here, you would click upload banner. It'll pull up your media library where you can then add some images to upload to your shop. You can do that by clicking upload files and then select files and it will pull up a window. You can't see it because of my recording software, but it'll pull up a window where you can then add that file, which will be uploaded. And then you can add your profile picture. So using our completed profile as a comparison, you can see the banner image is this large image in the background here, and that the profile image is the smaller image right in front of that. So you want to plan your photos ahead of time to fit within those formats. Remember your profile image is almost always circular and your banner image should be at least 1,900 by 470 pixels. As you can see, your store name is editable. We have it right here. I could change this if I wanted to, but don't forget that changing your store name does not change your store URL. So you want to make sure that if you do change your store name, you're contacting me at support at mycommunitymade.com or that you're going to fill out the support contact form in order to get your URL changed so I can get you that 502 redirect and all the benefits that come with it. Store categories. You're going to want to uncheck uncategorized and you're going to want to pick from these categories which ones actually suit your store. So if I'm selling art, I'm going to pick arts, crafts, and collectibles, just like that. You can see that you can pick multiple categories if you also dabble with a little bit of B2B work, let's say you, maybe you make arts and crafts, but you also sell it, or, or maybe you make your own yarn. Well, you could be a business to business seller as well. And putting that there will just tell other shoppers that if they're looking for supplies, that maybe you're somebody they could buy from. Now store products per page. All it's asking is how many products are you planning on showing per page? So when a user goes onto your site, how many products do you want them to scroll? 12 is what all products are typically shown in groups of. Important part here, if you want to protect your privacy, if you don't want people to know exactly where you live, just don't fill this part out. I already have your address from your billing information. This street address, what it's asking here is it's going to tell other people where you live. Uh, for instance, you can see here that Lulu's has filled in their address, which is great. It increases transparency for the customer. You can choose the level of transparency that you're comfortable with. Some sellers just don't want people to know exactly where they live. For us, we're just going to tell them that we live in Wales. These details will be visible now on the front end. If at any time you're uncomfortable having those details, you can just start deleting them and they won't show up anymore on your store page. You can see that you have the option to show or hide your email. I'm of the camp that it's always best to just add as much contact information as you can. The easier it is to sell, the better. So I always enable that, but you're welcome to turn it off. You're welcome to remove your phone number as well. 
I almost never contact anyone by phone, so you don't have to worry about my community made being angry with you for removing your phone number. That's mostly just there for if you do any type of phone communication with your customers. This more product section, I can't think of any viable reason why you wouldn't want to show up, so this is tab by default. This section right here is important as well. The default location for all shops on this map is Sturbridge, Massachusetts, USA. If you look at Sturbridge, Massachusetts in our vendor filters, you will see an incredible amount of shops located in Sturbridge. What a lot of people don't know is you actually want to set this for your actual address. In our case, that's Wales, Mass. By typing it in and pressing enter, it'll put a little pinpoint where my shop is. When shoppers are looking for stores that are local to them, it will show the pinpoints that are closest to their actual location using Google Maps API, uh, which we pay for and handle. If you leave this in Sturbridge, it will still do that, except you aren't actually located in Sturbridge. It's just that we made that the default. If you plan on having a separate terms and conditions from us, let's say for instance that you want customers to follow a certain set of rules when dealing with your shop, you're going to want to check this and you're going to want to write in your terms and conditions details. It's important that you be able to communicate with your customer what your rules are. This isn't necessarily where you would detail things like return policy. This is where you would detail things more like about your operation. What is the customer agreeing to by working with you? This is really important for any type of custom work. That is the number one reason that we've included in the site. If you do commission artwork and you're only going to do three revisions before a customer has to just be okay with what they get, this is where you add that. At My Community Made, we're not the police or anything. We're not going to get rid of your shop just because one or two customer complaints. But if you breach your own terms and conditions, that's not good. That'd be grounds for us to consider removing your shop to protect customers. Be sure that you're as transparent as possible with how you operate and that you give them no reason to doubt. Just be honest here. Tell them what your maximum number of revisions on, on a product is. Let them know what type of customization options you'll do. Let them know how quickly they have to get back to you in order for you to finish an order in time. This is where you tell the customer, hey, you have 12 days to respond or else, you know, the order is canceled, no refunds. This is where you put all of those details. I am actually going to uncheck it just because I don't need to write a terms and conditions right now. Discount, enable a store-wide discount. So clicking this, it will allow you to run a sale. This is something you're gonna come back to uh, off and on. So if I put a minimum order out of 50, I can put a percentage of whatever number I want. So what this is saying is when a customer spends more than $50 in my store, I'm gonna give them 25% off. If you're interested in doing that, you know, go right ahead. In this case, we're going to uncheck the discount just because I'm not actually running a sale right now. The biography is possibly the most important part of the site and your brand. Keep in mind that your brand's name and all of the SEO with that is mostly constricted to your store page. Your, your biography is where you give Google all the tools it needs to really know what you're about and what this whole page is about. This is where you wanna add everything that makes you unique, uh, how you started the business, anything that, that a customer might be interested in. So in this case, I'm going to look at the biography that that Lulu's has here. So you can see they, they put together our nice little biography. It has images here, which is great. It has information about the owners. It tells them about why they started the business, all, all of these details that would be important to somebody. If your vendor biography is blank, it just tells the customer that you haven't thought about it, you haven't tried to tell them about who you are. It's always good to have something here. I know that when you're starting a new shop, it, it's hard to invest time into something like a biography, but it's really the best tool for getting your business started is, is by giving the customer as many details as you can about what you do. Enabling support, what these are saying here is, um, do you want a customer to be able to contact you through your email address, through our support system? What that, that means is, again, going to Lulu's, you can see that you can contact store here. This is the support button. So if I click this, I'll have to log in or create an account to do it. But what it'll ask me is, it'll, it'll ask me to leave a message for Lulu's. When you fill out the enable support, you can change this text to whatever you would like. So 
this is very important for artists that do custom work. If, if you do personalizations and or you do uh, custom commissions and you're sure that customers need to contact you before they're willing to buy something, you can you can write whatever you want. You can write learn more. And you can see that if I update those settings there, when I later go to my, my shop, instead of saying contact store here or support, it's going to say learn more. So a customer can click that and they can, they can then ask me a question directly through the platform. And here at the bottom, we also have enable live chat. So this is actually a, something that's very, very fun. Uh, if you enable your live chat and you get your Facebook page ID, which you can follow the instructions here in order to do, you'll have to log in and, and just grab your page ID add your Facebook page ID and it will automatically hook up your Facebook Messenger account with your Facebook page, which is really exciting. So if you mostly sell on Facebook, this is a great way to sort of attach your, your Facebook Messenger directly to your My Community Made site so that users can just chat with you as though it's live chat on any other website. It's really exciting. It's really great stuff. For now, I'm going to disable live chat because we'll probably do a video in the future on how to set that up, but right now, it's just not something that we're looking at. And there we go. I've updated every field on the store page. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to payment. So to recap what we've done so far, we've created our store by signing up for an account. We've registered as a free user. We've gone through all of our store settings. We've set a biography. We've set a terms and conditions. Next thing we need to do is we need some way in order to get paid. Keep in mind as well that you can also follow these settings right here at the top as well to help you in your journey of setting up your My Community Made profile. 